Alright, guys, for this one, we did the first one together, right? Where we found the equation of the median from versus P. So it went from P to the midpoint of 2R. Then I asked you to find the, the sorry, the, mid, the median even, from point Q and from point R. Alright, so R is at the bottom. So that means going from Q, it's going to go to the midpoint of PR. Remember all the other two, the two letters. So that's the first thing you do. You find the midpoint of PR, it was a half and three over two. Then you find the gradient between Q and that midpoint that you just saw. All right, so Q was five, nine, and that is the midpoint. You find the gradient by doing change in Y over change in X. So you take the one y value minus the other y value is always minus. And then at the bottom, the one x value minus the other x value. You could have done it the other way around as well. You would have gotten the same answer. So if you did this, stage, this y value, 3 over 2, minus that y value, 9 over, but then you must start with the same one, same x value. Then you must start with this x value again, minus that y value. You'll get the same answer. So you can decide as long as you do the same for the minus the other one for your y and for your x. That's very important. Okay, so you get a gradient of 5 over 3, which is possible, guys. I feel like sometimes if you get a fraction as an answer, you think it must be wrong. Okay, it's possible to get a gradient that's fraction there. So you use this formula, you put the m there in the place of m, the gradient, you put it in the place of m, and then you choose a point. Now, guys, I think we all will agree that this point will be easier to sub in than that one. Right? It's easier to sort with whole numbers than fractions. So I decided to sub in the one with whole numbers. But if you sub in the other point, you would get the same answer. Right? You can sub in either one of those two points. But you cannot sub in P. Or R, because those two points are not on this medium. It has to be one of these two. So remember, your x value here is x1, and your y value there is y1. So you say y minus y1 minus 9 is equal to, to the gradient times x minus x1, which is 5. Next step, you multiply the 5 over 3 into the brackets. You get that. Right, but I want you to be put all completely by fraction. You are allowed to use your calculator here. All you then need to do is collect like terms. So you're going to say minus 25 over 3. When you move this minus 9 over, it becomes plus 9. And then the calculator will give you that 2 over 3. All right, so I want you to panic when you see fractions. You can say this one plus 9. And that is in the final option. Now, guys, why am I not from this state multiplying each term by three to get rid of those denominators? Why can I not do that in this state? Because technically, this is an equation with fractions, right? Do we remember from the first chapter when if you have an equation? And if you have an equation with fractions, you multiply each term by R to B, get rid of it. So I'm worried that some of you might have seen this and thought, okay, let's multiply each term by three, so then I'm not going to have denominators anymore. But guys, the point here is to get y equals something with an x and then a value of t. If I multiply each term by three, I'm going to get a three y, which I don't want. It has to be y equals everything else. All right, so that is why in this case I'm not multiplying each term by three to get rid of those denominators. Okay, any questions on that one? Number three, you have to find the equation of the median from point R. So that means that it will go to the midpoint of PQ. So that is the midpoint of PQ. Again, we're working with fractions, but that's okay, guys. All right, please. We can't always find it when we see fractions. So you're going to have to find the gradient between R, because it's going from R, to the midpoint of PQ. So you need to find the gradient between those two points. Okay, so the gradient is change in Y. So I'm taking this Y value minus the other Y value. 
Oh, the change in x, I'm taking the same x value minus the other x value. Yes. Uh, oh, I see. Thank you. Do you guys see that I forgot my minus here in the next step? So this is going to be wrong. I'll just fix it now. Thank you. All right. So that is a negative seven. Thank you for that. Oh, what is it? All right, so then when you're subbing in your point, again, guys, I decided to sub in the point with whole numbers, all right, just because it would be easier. So your y value is negative 3. Now, guys, do we understand why it's now y plus 3? That formula is y minus y1 equals m plus x minus x1. So what is y minus negative 3? Y plus three, eh? that's where that Y plus three comes. Equals to the gradient, which is negative seven, times X minus your X value, which is three. Now this is going to be negative seven X plus 21. And that is then going to give me plus 18. Negative seven X plus 18. Fine. You have to do this negative seven x plus eighteen. Okay, we're going to do the second type of line today. We are three, so we've done the median. Today we're going to do the altitude or the height. So that is the mean reading. You just see how we just go to them. All right, so the first heading, we just wrote types of lines, right? And then we said number one was the median. So maybe you rule off after this. And then you can just write types of lines continued, maybe. And then write a note on the altitude. Okay, so guys, you need to know both of those names because they can use either of them when they're asking you to find the equation. So the altitude and the height is the same thing. Now, this is a line, obviously, from a vertex, any of the three vertices again, from a vertex of a triangle. Perpendicular to the opposite side. So the median was going from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. The altitude is going from a vertex perpendicular to the opposite side. <clears throat> I'm just going to draw a picture here. Yeah, I'm not going to draw all three again. I think you know, I understand that. Just like we had three possible medians in a triangle, we have three possible altitudes or so. All right, so I'm just drawing. When you draw this, try and not. Draw it so that it looks like an isosceles triangle. Okay, make a one line out a little bit on one side of it. You can say A, B, and C. <clears throat> now we are going to draw the altitude from vertex A. And just like when you said the median, they will just tell you which vertex the line is coming from. 
you they need to be able to understand what side is being opposite to their point. All right, so we're going to do the altitude from A. We can write vertex A from point A, it's from A, that's fine. And now, guys, we're not going to see where the midpoint is. We're not doing the media now. I want you to take your ruler, and you are going to have to kind of estimate this, but draw a line that is perpendicular to the opposite side of point A. So it is now not going to the midpoint. That's the median. This is something completely different. So we're drawing it so that it makes a 90 degree angle with that opposite side. So if it is the altitude from A, then we need to know that it is, so I'm saying therefore, perpendicular to the opposite side. So perpendicular to BC. Okay, what did we do the other day? We highlighted the line. Okay, so we're just going to draw this one. But you can obviously have an altitude from C, you can have an altitude from B, right? Each time it will be perpendicular to the opposite side. Now, guys, what do we know about lines that are perpendicular? I mentioned this the other day. Yeah. Something about the gradient, yes. Yeah. Yes. The product of the two gradients is negative one. All right. So that means that this, let's just call this a d. All right. Just put in a d there at that point at the bottom. So it doesn't have a name at the moment because it wasn't drawn in on the original time. All right. So we just put in that in. So, therefore, we know that the gradient of AD, which is the altitude, right, multiplied by the gradient. Now, which side is this line perpendicular to? BC. Right, so multiplied by the gradient of BC is going to be equal to negative y. And guys, this is very important. We are going to use this to find the equation of the line. This calculation is going to be completely different from the previous one. In the previous one, we can calculate the midpoint of that opposite side. That is to do. There is no formula to calculate this point. Right? There's no formula to calculate a point that is perpendicular to a line. Right? If we just have the three points. So I'm going to write here at the bottom. There is no formula to calculate this point. Therefore, have to work with gradients. Okay, I'll show you now. We're going to write down the steps again. Follow. All right, I just want to write this down as we did the first one. And then there we go. To find the equation. Okay. So let's write to find the equation of the altitude, and then we're going to write on the steps and we're going to practice it. To find the equation of the altitude. Now, guys, this again is a straight line. So we're going to have to end up with an equation that y equals an mx plus c. All right. So again, we are looking for y equals mx plus c. So just like when we did the median, we need to find the gradient of this line. And then you're going to sub in a point that's on the line to get the actual equation. The way of finding the gradient is going to be completely different. Though. Remember, guys, to use the gradient formula, what do we need? Change in y over change in x. We need two points, hey? Eh? Yes? Like I said, there is no way to find this point. 
So we can't, we unfortunately can't just use the same thing while the change in x because we're not going to have point D. We only have point A, that's the one that's given. So what we're going to have to do, guys, we're going to have to find the gradient of BC, the gradient of the opposite side, and then use this formula to actually find the gradient of the opposite side. Right, so the first thing for this is going to be to find the gradient of the opposite side. All right, step one, find gradient of opposite side. Using M formula, the gradient formula that came in Y of the change in X. Because they're going to give us B and C. All right, remember they always give us the three points of the triangle. So we can find the gradient of this one because we have those two points. But remember they try, they're asking us to find this equation. All right, so I can't even say that this gradient is the same as this gradient. Do you guys agree? These two gradients are completely different. So once I've found this gradient, I'm going to use that formula you'll see now when you do the example to find the altitude. So step two is then going to be use let us write gradient of A, B times gradient of B, C. The letters can be different sometimes, right? It's what? To calculate. Gradient of A C, the gradient of the altitude. So three <clears throat> sub the gradient of the altitude, and so guys, we're gonna have to sub in a point, right? Into that y minus y one equals m x minus x one formula. Remember, if we're trying to find the equation of a line. I have to sub in a point on this line. So what point am I going to have to sub in to find the equation of AD? Can I find point D? No. So what is the only point that I actually have that lies on this line? Point A. All right, you can't sub in point B, but B doesn't lie on this pink line. We're trying to find this equation. I can't sub in point C. C doesn't lie on this line. The only point that I have, so that will be given, that actually lies on the line that we're trying to find is A. So we only have one option for subbing in. That's instant. All right. We can only sub in the vertex that the line is coming from. To sub the gradient of AB, this is the one that you're calculating in step two, and point A. I'm just going to put in brackets the given vertex. All right. They'll tell you it's coming from A or B or C. That's the one that you're subbing in. Into the formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Right, that's step three, the subbing in those values. And then step four is going to be to multiply out the brackets and get y on its own. I'm going to say isolate y. I think we need that from the last thing now, right? And you can go off. And you can get some more time to go. Okay, we're going to do an example now. <clears throat> Okay, again, they are going to give you the coordinates of the three points. So I think we'll use the same points that we used on Friday. Change. So P was negative two and six. Q was five and nine. And R was three and negative three. <clears throat> 
Question one, find the equation and the altitude from vertex C. Guys, when you see the word altitude, I want you to think immediately perpendicular. Right? When you see the word median, you have to think immediately midpoint. Because that's going to tell you what you must calculate. Right? When you see the word altitude, I want you to think immediately perpendicular. Now, we have triangle PQR. Remember, it doesn't matter what that triangle looks like. If the point, if the line coming from point P, the opposite side is always going to be QR. All right, so this is coming from P, which is negative two six two QR. All right, not the midpoint of QR now. It's actually going to be perpendicular to QR. So we need to find the gradient of QR first. And that's always what we're going to do. Step one is to find the gradient of QR. And it looks like I'm going to have to start conversating with a phone here in this book. I can get to put it away in your bag. Not in your pocket, in your bag. All right, the gradient of QR, guys, changing Y over change X, always. Y minus 1, 9 minus negative 3. Over, change in X. Starting with Q again, right? We did the Y value of Q first, so we must do the X value of Q first as well. 5 minus 3. work that out in your head or you can do it on the calculator it doesn't matter this is going to be nine plus three right which is 12 over five minus three which is two so what's 12 over two six all right so the gradient here is positive six step one done and you get a mark for doing that now step two is we are going to write therefore Gradient of now, guys, we didn't give us the name of the altitude, so we can't now say pH or something, right? We can't just use a random letter. You are allowed to write alt though as your subscript, like that's the gradient of alt, the altitude, or you can write height if you want. You can write the whole word, word as well if you want to, but alt is just fine. Gradient of the altitude multiplied by the gradient of QR is equal to negative one. So those two lines are perpendicular. Okay, right, the gradient of the altitude is what we have to find. What is the gradient of QR? Six. So we put that into the formula. Now what did I do to get the gradient of the altitude on its own? What did I do with that six? On this side, I'm multiplying by six. So when I move it, I have two. Divide by six, thank you. So the gradient of the altitude is going to be negative one over six. Step two then, the two marks in. All right, maybe you just wanna write there, this was step one, this is step two. Therefore, now I'm going to sum. Which point are we allowed to sum in now, guys? If we're finding the equation of the altitude, remember they said it's from vertex P. So, which point must I sum in? Are there the right 
with what was her sum in from vertex C. So I'm coming into the altitude now, but what point am I stopping? What point actually lies on that line? Point P. Right? So point P, it's saying from vertex P, right? So P lies on the line. So P is the point that I'm going to stop in. So I'm going to write here P, negative 2 and 6. Okay, I'll just rewrite that formula quickly before we actually sub in. Y minus Y1 is M times X minus X1. Okay, I'm subbing values now into this formula. Remember, Y1 is the Y value of the point. So Y minus 6 equals M is the gradient you just calculated. Negative 1 over 6 times X minus. Now, what is the x value here? Negative 2. So, what is x minus minus 2? Plus 2. Okay, so you can actually write that straight away. All right. Okay. And now we need to multiply the bracket off. So, we have y minus 6 is equal to. Negative 1 over 6 times x is just negative 1 over 6x. Two times negative 1 over 6. And two, negative 1 over 3. You can also just pass that into the calculator if you want to find. Now we just need to get y on its own. Now let's move that minus 6 over. I need to become a plus 6 when I move it. So I'm going to have negative 1 over 6x. I have negative a third plus 6. That's going to give me positive 5 and 2 thirds. All right, if you want to write it like that, you can. But I'm going to write it as, uh, I think it's 17 over 3. Someone just check that for me. Yes, thank you. That plus six, you'll get seven, you know. Okay, that's where that's from. So this line was step three, right? Actually subbing in those values. And then step four was actually multiplying out the bracket and then moving the six over. Oh, no, no, four. Oh, Jesus. Step six, five. Right, that is step four, sorry, not step six. There we go. Okay, any questions? Okay, I want you please to do on your own two and three, just like you did for homework, to find the altitude from vertex Q and from vertex R. And those questions as well, please. Are there too much for me to write down now? So, just, yeah, we'll have to check in.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.